Okay, hey guys, it's me, Dax Moy, from uh, Personal Trainer Success Academy, and uh, God knows, a whole bunch of other things. Um, you, know, you know who I am, and you know where I'm from. Um, today, I'm really, really pleased to be on the call with, uh, with Paul Mort. I was just about to... Uh, just about to call him the boot camp king, but of course he's not the boot camp king anymore because he got promoted from boot camp king to uh, emperor. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> so you're not you're no longer the boot camp king. So that would have been been doing you a disservice. It would have been. I mean, Paul, we obviously we have quite a quite a large history together. We've known each other for a very long time. We've seen each other through lots of lots of uh, lots of changes over the years, both yeah. personal and business. Now I think you know we could we could fill we could absolutely fill a call with you know thousands and thousands of things, but. I think the thing that interests me most and the thing, the thing that I think will interest the listeners the most today yeah. will be, I guess, really to do with some, you know, I, I guess there's no other way to put it, really. It's some of the struggles you've been through just recently. Yeah. Uh, and as a result of those struggles, some of the realizations you've come to and some of the, some of the lessons that you'd, you'd like to pass on to yeah. this fledgling profession of ours. I mean, you, you know, pretty much, I would say, from being a person who is incessantly in the in the spotlight in the certainly in the UK fitness industry and, and to a fair bit overseas but certainly the UK yeah. um, you've gone from being there like literally every minute of every day almost to a complete Facebook and email messaging and yeah. kind of any other form of blackout I mean where the hell you been okay well First of all, there's lots of things I want to say today. I don't know how they're going to come out. Um, anyone that knows me will be like, I can't believe Paul's talking about this stuff. Because as you know, my friend, I am about as deep as a brown paper bag. Um, but <laughs> over the Christmas period, I just felt myself and I felt myself just change. Like literally just wake up one morning and feel different and think differently. And it's been a very tough process. Um, I almost feel like I've evolved. So where have I been? I've actually... I can't believe I'm about to say this. I've actually been really poorly, um, and I'm and I'm not just talking stress to run down. Um, I've actually <laughs> I was given the term clinical depression. Now I'm still sort of refusing to accept that, but I've had every symptom going. I've basically um, I haven't I wouldn't I couldn't even take a shower, mate. Um, yeah. And I, I saw it through therapist. I went to a retreat, and lots of stuff just came out. I saw myself. Or I found myself just thinking differently about people, thinking differently about situations, thinking differently about me. And I know you're probably going to ask questions on what I discovered, etc. But that's that's where I've been. I've been um, in a, in a dark place. I am out on the other side, and I just want to tell one of the messages I want to get across today. And again, I'm just going to ramble quite a lot because that's what I find myself just going on these mad ramblings. I want to get across a few messages that it's just it's okay for this shit to happen. Because mm -hmm. I think, I think, and one of the things that I really want to get across is I think sometimes in the fitness industry, people are scared to be themselves almost. They almost, and th this is one of the main messages that I'm getting now, they almost think that there's a way that you've got to act and a way that you've got to be and a way that you've got to talk. And it's, and I think, I think there's a lot more people who have felt like me or are feeling like me. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's pretty much where I've been, brother. <laughs> well, Paul, you know, I mean, obviously we're we're going to talk about this at length, but uh, you know, I I certainly would agree. I think you're I think you're spot on there. There's, you know, we we use the term. You know, it's not a ple very pleasant term, but we use the term marketing incest, and yeah. and certainly the fitness pro fitness industry has become really really guilty of this. With yeah. you know, they they watch someone who they deem to be doing very very well, and they suddenly become that person, and in a very short space of time, they find that who they are has been yeah. lost yeah. into this. This culmination of like six or seven of the biggest gurus. They're, they're yeah, using, yeah, yeah. using and, and one type nutritional philosophies and the yeah. different guys' training philosophies That's and the it. different guys' marketing and so on and so forth. Yeah. And they wake up, and as you've kind of described, waking up one day and kind of thinking, well, hold on, who am I in all of this? Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's weird because I actually feel like, and obviously this is, this is you'll know this, I'm quite an honest guy and I wear my heart on my sleeve and I, I, I pretty much tend to shoot from the, from the hip. So if I'm feeling like this and I'm quite. I be myself most of the time, which is how I end up in so much trouble. And I, I can't yeah. bear to think what other people must be feeling. I almost want to say, look, there's no way in the world you can enjoy in the winter getting up at 5.30 every morning. I don't care what you say. <laughs> there's no <laughs> way in the world that in your perfect day, you want, to be, you want to be training people all day. I don't care. It's 
yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I, I, so, like, so, let, I, I just want to kind of latch onto something that you said, right? So yeah. you know, life had been ticking along for you for a while, yeah. and it was it was all going. I'm well, not just going well. I mean, going very well. Yeah. You know, you had you had you had particularly last year. You had quite a few moments that were unbelievable dramatic by by anyone's standards. Yeah. Well, you know, last, year, kind of, last year I got married, had a baby. I've pretty much trebled my income. And I moved to Spain. And this is this is where the depression thing. I couldn't. I just couldn't get it. I was like, "Hold on a second. I can pretty much do whatever I want. I've got the perfect life." And it just, but just something about it wasn't right. Right. So it was all going really well for you. Yeah. And then, and then you. Yeah. I mean, was was there any any warning that the um, things were feeling a bit odd for you? Well, or at not? Christmas, at Christmas, I went home, and. I, <sighs> It just, it, back to the UK, anyone that doesn't know I live in Spain now, and I went back to the UK and it just didn't feel right for me. I was having conversations with people and I was just like, I've got nothing in common with these people anymore. And like I say, I just felt like I changed. Then I came back to Spain and I just saw things from a different light. And I realized that um, a few people let me down, which I'm not, it's, that's not a huge deal. But then I, then I felt like there's a lot of... <sighs> And and one of the things that I don't like is is lack of gratitude, and I felt a lot of lack of gratitude um, by just certain things that went down. And like I say, I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, and yeah, and then one day, it it just went over a few days where I felt almost moody, like not miserable, but just moody. And I, I, my temp, I would snap, and then I couldn't do stuff. And then as he said, you're depressed. I was like, I'm not. Then we went to see a doctor, I went to see a few people, and yeah, I was. But right. I, it, the, the the term that I could describe it as, Dax... Fitness is quite a, a cutthroat industry, and I think now more so than ever before, um, because of this invention of Facebook. And I feel, I felt, and I still feel a little bit of it battle weary because for ten years I've pretty much been non-stop because I'm a pretty relentless type of guy. If I want something, I'm going to bust me balls until I get it, and then I'm going to move on to the next thing, and then the next thing. And I just felt like battle weary that I'd also had people who were sort of climb that had climbed on my back. And and just weighed me down a little bit, and then it all just came to a halt. And then I was just literally exhausted by it all, mentally, physically, emotionally. Been a lot of tears. Yeah. Now that's that's really interesting because, as you remember, when I spoke uh, I spoke at your event Feb last year, uh -huh. um, and I've just recently come back from LA, and I was speaking. Uh, I gave I gave the first part of my series of talks called "Awaken the Guru Within." Yeah. And what I, uh, you've just described exactly what I what I speak about at that event, which is. We we have this. See, for for me, one of the things that I've realised for myself as I've been kind of developing over the last few years is that I actually don't want to be a leader. Okay, I want I want to be a guru, but in the very real sense of, sense of the word guru, like leading people from the darkness into the light. Yeah. Right. So, and one of the things that certainly in this LA event that I've just come back from, everyone after I, after I was on stage came up and said that I effectively completely described them and their lives, and that was that. When you position yourself as a leader, you effectively put yourself into a race, into a competition with everyone else. And even if you're at the head of the pack, yeah, like like you clearly, like you clearly were in your in your yep. little niche, yeah, you're at the, at the head of the pack, but you still can't relax because you see people closing up the gap, and you yep. think, well, I've got to stay ahead of them, and I've yep. got to, you know, there's all these new guys coming in, and all oh, they're saying some interesting stuff, so I've yep. got to sound better than them again. And it puts you into this perpetual competition, yeah, this perpetual competition mindset where. It's you know I believe it's not not particularly healthy for any of us because we're as much as we can talk about abundance we actually start to think from a position of lack like ah they've taken they've taken a, a good chunk of the good chunk of the market space they've taken you know people are starting to listen to these guys now what if they don't listen to me yeah and you know what if my my percentage in the marketplace goes down and so yeah. on and so forth and not all of this is conscious. But subconsciously, it can happen if we continue to play the leadership game. So, I mean, does that resonate with you? Is it that does absolutely, that to go absolutely, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and it's it, it it's almost. I think is I think it might be a UK thing. I don't think we look at. I don't think. I mean, it might just be. A, it might just be my perception of it. But I don't think as a fitness industry and as as the UK fitness industry in particular, we don't look at these things and we don't look closely enough at ourselves. Because we're just almost, it's almost as though we're scared to miss anything. And, and we're like, and we don't, I think the word that I'm, the, the saying that I'm looking for is the truth hurts sometimes, I think. So yeah. we ignore this shit. Well, it, it does if you let it build up. If yeah. you, the truth hurts if you let the lies about who you are and what you're about continue to build up. Because yeah. um, 
you know, and we, we've all we've all done it. And it's you know, it's interesting to hear you now because I, I went through my dark night of the soul, so to speak, about you know eight or nine years ago, where uh, where kind of very similar similar things happened to myself, Paul. Yeah. So you know, and I, I lost contact with who I was and what I was about and what my bigger purpose was. And yeah. you know, for me, I started to focus on the com- competitive aspect of the marketplace as well as um, the amount of money that I was earning. So I started to look at things from a much more transactional perspective as opposed to from a from a, the relationship perspective that I generally tend to put things back to again. Now. Yeah, yeah, I agree because because I was having this realization that I was also having conversations with people and spending time with people and it wasn't I wasn't getting anything from the conversations with them. I wasn't stimulated. It was almost just me give 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 all the time. Yeah. And I and I and it's we had a I don't even know, what, like I say, I don't really know what triggered this. It's almost as though I just woke up one morning and thought differently. So I've, I've actually let a lot of people who I've worked with go because I'm like, you can give us your money, but when I talk to you, I just, when I, when I hang up the phone, I'm like, oh, thank God for that. Yeah. And and, and the guys who work with me pay me a lot of money to work with me. And I, and, I, and it, you know what? It's it, it almost feels like it's time for me to start looking after myself so much because I have a yeah. vested interest. I'm so passionate about helping other people that sometimes I forget to help myself. And like you always say, I don't even know who said this because I'm not that deep. I'm not that intelligent. Uh, <laughs> we've had this conversation, is you can't help the poor by becoming one yourself. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln rule. I found myself yeah. starting to complain about things. And, and I have this rule, if I complain about something more than twice, I've got to do something about it. Mm. Hence, this will be a surprise to some of the guys out there, but I now, I, I didn't know whether I was going to say this today or not, but I've now um, sold Fitness Camp Academy. Yeah, so I mean, business, I was just about to come to this. I mean, yeah, the business you know, that's took 10, 10 years of blood, sweat, tears, and a business that I used to be head over heels in love with, I've sold 75% of it. Right, so point point blank, kind of 100%, you know, full up, honest answer. Why Why did you do that? What was what what kind of compelled you to do that, Paul? I felt myself getting frustrated, Dax, as in... I was providing, I can, and I get this with my mentoring students. I get it with 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 um, personal personal training clients, with bootcamp clients, with people who do my online stuff. And and I just sort of, I wasn't getting anything from it anymore. I just got myself in a position where I was I was frustrated and it was draining a lot of my energy. And I think it's because I had such an emotional attachment to it. So when I give somebody tools and they didn't go out and use it, it used to really, really irked me that they didn't do it and it was almost like and this is one of the realizations this is the main point that i want to get across today the stuff that came out on my retreat when i was having a counseling was that i care too much and i take everything personally i think anybody that knows me or follows me knows that i take everything personally and i care a lot Mm. and it mainly came down to the fact that the expectations that i have of other people are way too high now i'm going to clarify that as well because i'm so passionate about if I'm passionate about something, I'm not just passionate. I'm insanely passionate. The other stuff I don't give a shit about. If I'm passionate about something, it's not normal passion. It's not. I don't think it's healthy. It's insane <laughs> passion. So I put my heart and soul into that shit. Now, when other people don't do the same, I get so frustrated. It's insane. So, yeah, yeah. that's the reason reasoning behind that. I just right. couldn't deal with it anymore, and I wasn't getting any real satisfaction anymore. Because even the last group of JLP guys finished, and they gave me the results, and the results were amazing. But I didn't feel the same amount of satisfaction as I did before because I'm almost like, well, I told you it would work. Yeah, It's a little bit of boredom there as well, Dax. And I'm now in a position where I almost feel like I've got so much more to offer than just getting people in shape and helping people make money. Because I'm, I'm almost like, and this is the stuff that gets me about the, this, this freemium thing. It's where you give away free content. I'm like, people are trying to argue with me all the time. And I'm almost fed up of trying to prove myself. Yeah. I'm like, I've got a system that works. I live in Spain. I can do what I want. Yet you still want to try and call me out. Just follow the shit. It's there yeah. in black and white. Just do. If someone went on my blog and just read my blog, they could build a six-figure business. I've got no doubt about that. If someone went and read all my articles and just applied the stuff that I learned on a fitness point of view, they would get in shape. Yet I'm almost just, I've almost just, I'm tired of trying to prove myself. Well, again, that, that comes that's down the competitive to the, thing. It's the competition mindset again, isn't it? Yeah. And the the weird thing is, in, I think it happens in all professions anyway, but in, in this in this industry in particular, um, because just because of the way we've engineered it, the way we put it together, yep. it feels to people that they can't really be in agreement with a person because, in some way, shape, or form, 
it hurts their own credibility to say, ah, oh, yeah, so and so is right on this. Yeah. So yeah. what they want to do is, and, you know, I wrote an article I think it was last year, the uh, crabs in a bucket thinking. Yeah. You know, you know, and and is that is that same thing? It's like okay, you put a whole bunch of crabs in that bucket, and you know, one of them starts to get to the top, and the others are. The others don't really care whether they get out or not, but it's just important to them that they they don't let the one crab escape. Yeah, yeah. And we we see a lot of that in this profession. Yeah, uh, it's not well. We don't and see. You know it what? Actually, you know what? I'll be the first to admit I've done that before. Yeah, I've done it before, and I probably still have to. I'm doing a lot of this thing that we that that when I work with my therapist, we call catching myself. I've got to catch myself a lot these days. I've got right. to catch myself from saying something. I've got to catch myself from doing something. I've got to catch myself from even writing a to-do list that's too long in case I get overwhelmed by it. Mm. I've got to catch my thinking and my activities all the time. Now, you know, I, I think both from a business perspective but also from um, an actual coaching perspective, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of crossover, crossover here that I think a lot of the listeners on this call could, could really benefit from because it's – it's the same pro- it's, you know it's a different area like as in most of most of your stresses most of your overreaching has occurred now around coaching coaching the coaches yeah right but it's not really any different to the what many of these people will be going through in terms of coaching their clients you know yeah. they they're getting pissed off with i'm telling my clients to do this stuff and they're not doing it and i'm yeah. telling my clients to eat this way and they're not eating that way and yeah. i'm telling them to train this way and they're not training that way yeah right so you know, less less the people on this call are thinking. Well, yeah, very interesting. You know, Paul Paul Mott's gone gone through a bit of something. You know, I think there is something there directly for them to learn. You know, even if they don't mentor or coach other other coaches, but yeah. in in terms of how they run their business. I mean, what what do what's your what would be your biggest um, your biggest kind of I don't know a Paulism. What would, what would be your biggest kind of word of wisdom for for those people who they're not trying to build build an empire like you did with with coaching coaches, but they're yeah. working with they're working with their clients, but they're feeling a bit burnt out. They're feeling a bit stressed. They're feeling a bit dejected, a bit upset that you know they're they're working their hearts out for their clients, and their clients aren't yeah. listening. It was, and it, you know, it it comes through, and it's so simple. And I've had a lot of shit for this in the past. I've actually had guys record a fucking podcast about this. Um, it's okay not to help everybody. It's okay. There seems to be some sort of problem that because you're a fit pro, you've got to help everybody. Well, you actually. Number one, you can't help everybody because you're not a good fit with everybody, regardless of what you think. Mm-hmm. And it is okay not to, not to help everybody. This is this is what I thought. I'm not helping anybody that I don't get feel a real personal connection with now that I don't get anything from, or they just don't. There's certain things that there's certain tests that I, that I've sort of realised that I do, and if they if they don't pass it, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't help you right now. For instance, the whole the whole uh, my town excuse. I hate that. Yeah. I hate the whole um, when you when you're going to put on a call somewhere or you're putting on an event. They want you to come to their front door and do the event. Yeah, in my in my living room. In my living room, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, or you know what it's like when you get the clients who complain about price. It's okay to not bring the price down for them. It's okay when they when they when if they can't follow your diet. It's okay to send them to somebody else. Yeah, um, and that's probably the Paulism that I want to get across like that. It's okay to say no. Well, yeah, I mean, and again, I I would agree with you completely. You're looking after think- your own sanity. <laughs> Yeah, and there's you know there's only so much energy in your battery, yeah. And you want to spend that you want to spend that energy on lighting up the people that want to be lit up, yeah. not not trying to you know not trying to kind of get people out of the. And dark. I don't think there's anything wrong with those people. They're just not a good. No. Like everyone say, oh well, they're energy vampire. They might just be an energy vampire around you. They may just be. They might actually be intimidated by you and your program. That's okay. Yeah, and yeah. and that that's I mean you bring up a great point there, Paul, because. And you know, I I myself have used that term energy vampires, but when I when I use it, I don't mean it derogatory derogatorily to the actual individual. It might be that we are oil and water. Maybe we can't mix. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly but, you know, it. But them and the very next coach that works with them might be it might be absolutely perfect, and they may never ever they, they may never ever sink the, sink their vampire teeth into them. You know, so yeah. it's is that. But yeah, I mean, you that is a great one to take away. That I think as a pro, as a profession or as a fledgling profession, we have a tendency to think because we're in a helping, caring, sharing profession that, you know, yeah. who the hell are we to turn someone away? Yeah. You know, yeah. why, you know, if you really cared, you, you'd, you'd take on the really difficult cases and the ones that, the ones that are really hard because surely that would be a good test of how good a coach you really are. Yeah. But, you know, what you're saying and what I completely agree with is that there are some people that you will never, ever, ever be able to coach. It's got no, it's no indication of your, your ability as a coach. It's your, your it's, 
It's how human beings relate to each other. Yeah. Imagine somebody that, w- that was offended by swearing ever work with me. <laughs> Imagine that. It's just not gonna, it doesn't mean to say they're an energy vampire or I'm a bad person. It just means that I was brought up in a, in a pretty rough area and that's the way I am. I'm not, yeah. not going to change the way I am because somebody wants to pay his money. Yeah. Yeah? I don't need money that much because I'm going to have to act differently. And this is right back to what I said at the start. It's okay to be yourself. Yes. It's okay to say no. It's, o- it's actually, you know what? It's okay to call someone fat. <laughs> Yeah. It's okay to say I don't want to work with fat people. That's good. I'd, I've never wanted to work with obese people. That's not why I got into the fitness industry. So when I, when I get emails from people saying, well, you work with them, I'm like, no, I can't work with obese people. I wouldn't have the patience. And I think I'm honest enough to admit that. All right, Paul. So I, just so I'm really hooking on to here now as, as we're talking, it, it, I mean, because obviously I, I've known all this stuff about you for a very long time, right? Yeah. You know, you're, you're very, you have very strong opinions and you, yeah. have, you have very strong beliefs and, you know, kind of... Right, I have to use the term rightly or wrongly. It's not even rightly or wrongly. It's right for you, right? These beliefs. So, if we come back to your, um, I mean, did did you call it a breakdown earlier? Did, it was a breakdown. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I didn't. I don't think I did, but it was. Right. So, if if we come back to actually, come, oh, I said I had one this morning. I did have one this morning. Right. Yeah. You <laughs> can exactly. What 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 was it that you had your had your breakdown over this morning, Paul? Uh, I have my front two teeth are on a pallet. Um, and I couldn't find the glue that glues them in with, and I had a full-on breakdown. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tears, right. fists, one early through doors, the lot. Right, so, you know, full and temper this, flare this was just... happening on a daily basis a few weeks ago, and I was like, you know what, this cannot go on, because it started to affect my relationship with Max and Leslie. Right. Yeah, and I don't care how much it pays. Yes. Right, okay. So, there we, there we go. So, you're, you know, obviously you've been stretched a bit thin. Yeah. And so, I'm just coming to it, because we, you just talk about honesty, and, you know, you, you feel... You feel that you know it's it's your duty to be honest to people, and it's your it's not just your duty; it's your right yeah. that you want to go through life. So, if we look at this, if we look at this breakdown scenario, how much of that then is a result of you not really being honest with yourself? Hmm, much a lot, but not through not through conscious. Not it wasn't a conscious thing that I wasn't honest with myself. No, you just, I found just yourself never had. I never took the time or pretty much had the bollocks to sit down and think about the stuff that I need to think about and talk about the stuff that came out last week. Yes. Yeah. When I was on the retreat, I'd never had the, I'd never put the side, the time aside because I was like, well, that's not important. It's got nothing to do with goals. Then it's got nothing to do with success, etc. But it's actually more important than those things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it was down to not being honest with myself, but I don't think it was through choice. Yeah. Or, 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 or that, a conscious thing. Make- so there's different ways to be dishonest around yourself. There's different ways to lie to yourself. Yeah. There's one way to actually know that something's not working and just completely, completely say the opposite. Yeah. And the other way to the other way to get there is to, I guess, not trust it, not trust some of your base instincts. You, we we all get very very minor alarm signals go off. Yeah. And we we kind of go well. Yeah, I'm a bit busy. I'll take care of that later on, and I'll. I'll kind of get around to that, but this is really important at the moment. Yeah. And then before you know it, you've got a second alarm alarm light going off on your dashboard. Yeah. And go well, yeah, but you know, I'm I'm still going, and I can still get this shit done. And I'm, yeah, and I'm I, still getting I, paid. It's it's normally a fact that I'm still getting paid for this. Yeah, exactly. But then then one day you actually realise you've got a whole dashboard full of alarm lights. Yeah. And you're like, fuck, I. I I've seen these alarm lights coming on, but I didn't think they were important. And yeah. now I'm in a car with no brakes go, going, at, going at 70 down the motorway, and it feels really crap. Well, funny enough, a lot of the breakdowns have happened in the car. I've had to get out of the car and get... My friend came over the other week. I went to pick him up from the airport. I got a little bit stressed out. I had to stop the car, and he had to get a taxi from the airport. Right. Because I just couldn't drive. That's how bad it was. So, look, assuming my analogy there is, is somewhat correct, what yeah. were some of the... What were some of the warning lights on the dashboard for you? Just so that you know, we understand both you, but also stuff that might help mm. might help the trainers listening to this call. What were you know? You, if you if you were actually to break it down and go right, if if I was really honest now, that one you know one of the first warning signs to me was getting pissed off about stupid things, like getting pissed I, off about an email that I would get from someone that was generally just complaining or asking a question. I'd be like, what the fuck are they asking that for? Are they stupid? That's right. that's one of them. So a short a short fuse, a short temper, and a lack of a lack of lack of patience is a huge one. My patience. Right. I mean, I'm not a very patient person anyway. It's in my nature. I'm trying to change it. But at that point, it was huge. My patience with people was horrific. 
horrific right. feelings of, um, I suppose the same thing, frustration at everything. Yeah. Feelings of, I would actually say, a lack of motivation. Right. A lack of motivation, which sounds just standard, but yeah, a lack of motivation. A feeling of being lost and no satisfaction from things that would normally give me satisfaction. Right. Like emails and, and, emails telling me about fantastic results and, and me being, well, I know that would happen. Yeah. And Ta- I, taking, taking things for granted. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, taking things for granted, absolutely. And um, I, I know, I know. At one point, Paul, and this was partly what led to you coming off of coming off of Facebook for what, nearly a month? Yeah, nearly a month. Second of January yeah. was the last time I went on. I posted again on the fourth. Yeah, so over a month. Right. So, and I, I remember kind of talking to you at one point, and you were just getting, um, or there were a couple of different elements, but one one part was you were feeling pr- like very sensitive to almost anything that was said that was in opposition to your views at yeah. times. Yeah. Um, and you know, your your nat- what you wanted to do more than anything else was actually lash out and attack, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was, and you know what, Dax? It was, it was actually I did well towards the end of the year at doing that. I didn't lash out and attack. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't respond in a physical or a, or almost keyboard warrior style way, which yeah. a lot of these guys are doing anyway. But the thing that I did do was I let it dictate my mood for the whole day. Right. So I responded well in the fact that I didn't go and attack them, but I responded very poorly in my head. So if I if I wrote something that run that run kind of counter to you, you'd be carrying, all day. carrying me around At on least your back a day. all day. At least a day. At least. Right. And I'd be thinking of ways that I could shut you up. Right. On a on an almost and I have got I think I have got big bollocks. So if you say something about me, I I've got no problem coming out and, and, and calling you out and having it out, but I'm thinking that's actually that's counterproductive anyway. But then in my head, it would be like it would affect my mood all day. And once it's starting to affect my relationship with my with my wife and my son, and the fact that I live out in Spain and shit, it, something's wrong. Mm. And I still I still get this brain shatter and this monkey brain and this lizard brain, whatever you want to call it. And I still get that. And but it's something that I want to work on. I think a lot of guys are probably getting that. Yeah, and like I say, Facebook's a major cause because I think Facebook on Facebook, a lot of people are just making noise and they're, they're, they're trying. They seem to be trying to impress other trainers rather rather than trying to impress the people that actually pay the money. Yeah, and I think that unless you train trainers, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your energy. I, I would I would agree with you completely. I had a conversation this morning, and I have relied heavily on Facebook. I've got no problem about that. But guess what? I haven't been on for a month, and my income hasn't been affected at all. And right. I actually, I hope none of the guys that were on me last GLP listen. My wife ran my last get my last get lean project inside Facebook. She just had to sign in and pretend to be me. Right. Um, well, it's not easy to be. It's not hard to be pretend to be me. You just put fucking every other <laughs> sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she. Uh, but, but she did that. But yeah, it's a. Fit. And I had a, I had a discussion with Tim Goodwin this morning actually, and I said, what would happen to most personal trainers if Facebook disappeared tomorrow? Most of them wouldn't have a business and they wouldn't know how to get clients. Mm. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, very good point. Very good point because so so many of uh, them are, are using it as a crutch at the moment. Yeah. But I and I also agree with what you just said in that much of the conversation on there is is not for the benefit of the end user, not for the benefit of the client. It's actually yep. for the benefit of looking good to their peers. And yeah. I, I, you know, I I don't mean that in a derogatory way to any coach listening to this, but. It happens to be the truth. I mean, all because it can be quite useful because you get some, you, you, you'll pick up some knowledge on there, and you'll yeah. you'll you'll get some friendships going on. But uh, yeah, if you yeah. But all, all you have to look look at, Paul, is quite simply. Um, I I did this because I had uh, recently. I've had very similar. Fi- uh, we've had this discussions. Very similar feelings as you. So I love my mentoring students. Always have. I love I love the impact that I I I make with with those who really want it. You know yeah. you. We, that's this is how we know each other through for yeah. mentoring in the first place, yeah. and you know. But I also found that I was actually carrying a lot of the weight from my mentoring issues. I'm putting out the work for them and saying, "Do this, do this, do this." And you know, weeks and weeks and weeks later, the stuff isn't <laughs> the stuff isn't being done. Yeah. And you know, I had I had one one student recently, kind of, you know, or at the very, at the very least, I don't know if, if she was, but it felt like she was pointing the finger back at me about you know some some way that maybe I let her down on the mentoring program, yeah. and I. 
you know, for, for all of about kind of 10 minutes, I took it quite personally. I kind of, oh, right. Uh, but then I, then I broke it down and said, no, thanks. Go back and actually have a look and see, you know, be honest with yourself. Have you let this person down and have a look? Yeah. And what I, what I did is I noticed that she had said she'd done everything within her power to, to create, you know, to create the, the outcome that, we, that she had desired yeah. and that I told her to create. And yet when I looked through, when I looked over Facebook, I, I see reams and reams and reams of chatter. Yeah. And literally in, in, a, in a 12-month period, only eight actual articles with any content or anything that would be useful to the general public. Yeah. Um, and so, again, I, I'm fairly certain that she'll listen to this call. And I just want to be really clear. I'm not pointing the finger. But the, it's, it's that whole thing that you and I are talking about and the very reason why we're on the call now. The truth will set you free. It's very yeah. easy to believe that because you spent six hours on Facebook this evening, that you've done six hours of work. But, you know, the, the truth is you've probably probably done five hours and 59 minutes of general chit-chat. Yeah. You know, and maybe 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 done one thing of one thing of value. Yeah. Um, that's certainly certainly the case. So that's I think that's a really, really important one. And I think one one of the things that you've shown by backing off yeah. is that even with minimal content, uh, even with minimal content, Contact. Yeah. You can you can choose to go in, make an impact, and get back out. And yeah, that, I pretty much made in, zero contact. Yeah, and in fact, it's it really comes down to that Pareto principle, the eighty twenty rule, and it yeah. might you know it's probably more like ninety nine one. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah, right. The one percent of important work you do outweighs the ninety nine percent of all the other shit that you get caught up in on a day to day basis. Yeah, yeah. Right. So and it's 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 focusing on that. So yeah. just coming coming back on to back onto you, Paul. Right. So all right, the. You've you've gone through you've gone through these uh, for this breakdown. You had you know you're pissed off. You're feeling that lots of lots and lots of things are are either personally targeting you, or if they're not personally targeting you, you feel that a I'm whole letting bunch them of, personally affect me. Yeah, yeah. You're 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 letting them take you. Out. Even if even if it could have been quite an obtuse comment, you just take take it that, that well that's that's aimed at me. Yeah, and you'll be carrying this around for at least a day and maybe. maybe Maybe several. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And th- and there's still some stuff that happened before and over Christmas that I still mentally haven't let go. And I know we spoke about keeping uh, journals and stuff. And I'm hoping that this week those stuff will just eventually just float away. Right. Because I'm still hanging on to them. And I think it's it, it's and <laughs> and I feel like it, it's weird because I would never in a million years have thought uh, me talk and you are all probably the same me talking about stuff like this. Mm. So the stuff, the stuff about getting it off your chest and getting it out there for the universe to take away is absolutely true. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. true. So, so here's here's a question. I mean, what you know, kind of, it's great. People are going to listen to this, and hopefully, they'll have taken a few things away. If if nothing more, they'll have taken away the fact that we're all humans, and we all, you know, you can you can look like everything is going going, you know, shit hot, but things can still screw up, right? Yeah, absolutely. What? And you know what, what Dax, I don't, I'm not, it's weird because I'm not, I don't claim to have all answers and especially not on this shit I'm talking about now because I don't know anything uh, about it. I'm just, I'm almost evolving on a daily basis and learning stuff about myself and I don't know if what I'm actually doing is correct. Right. But it's, no, it's right. you know well, what, I mean, it's quite cool. cool. That truth, that honesty is actually, is actually really, really useful because it keeps you open to finding the correct answers instead of saying, well, I've got the answer with a capital T, you yeah. know? Yeah, but, absolutely. So, when we when we first spoke about doing this call, yeah, um, you know what was in, in in your mind? You thought, right, I'm going to give up, you know, forty minutes or whatever on the on a call with on a call with Dax and, yeah. and share some stuff. What did you most want to come out of this call? What 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 were your? I don't I don't like using the word objectives because you're not really thinking. You at the moment you're not really even thinking in terms of right. goals. But yeah. some ticked over in Paul Mort's brain and said, "Shit, there's some stuff I have to say." Yeah, uh, some people I need to say it I to think- what. I think the first one is that it's okay to be yourself. Right. I think there's a lot of saying stuff for saying sake goes on. And that there's a lot of this is how you're meant to behave, this is how you're meant to act, this is what you're meant to say. This is what you're meant to do. Well, no, you don't have to. Success does leave clues, but not if those clues don't lead down your path. They lead down, they're leading down somebody else's path. Great observation. For instance, it's like um, everyone thinks that, and this is a big realisation that I've had, is that... And I, and I had this conversation with a mentoring student the other week. Let's get all these boot camps in all these different towns, which is partly my fault. That's what I've got. Yeah. But there's a lot of other people who are trying to do it and they're just getting stressed stressed out because once you start bringing in other trainers, that's when things change. And you'll know that more than anyone, Dax. Yeah, yeah. You can build this. And, and we had this discussion about the E-Myth and that the, the whole entrepreneurial thing, 
the whole entrepreneurial myth that you've got to build a business that doesn't rely on you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, who said? And yeah. and I also think that the fact that people like Tony Robbins, the fact that people like my friend Michael Heppel, who had a wonderful meeting with on Friday, they make a lot of money just relying on them. And this is my new thing. Just rel- don't. I don't want to ever have to rely on other people again. And I don't know if that's right or wrong, but that's just the way I'm feeling right now. Um, so yeah, I've gone totally off track. There. Number one, it's okay to be yourself. Is really the one. It's okay to act like yourself. It's okay to say what you want to say. It's okay not to help everybody. Um, one of the things that I didn't get across, Dax, and this isn't answering your question at all, because I still haven't answered that. <laughs> That's all right. You just this isn't answering right. your question. This is just something that I want to get across. Why don't you? I up? also discovered that I strive for recognition big time. Right. And it's an ego thing. So I basically worry a lot of the time, and although you probably think that I don't, I worry what people think. Mm-hmm. A lot. Um, and I think this is something that I've got uh, to work with. So this is actually something that, that my therapist gave us last week, and, and I want to read it out because it's very cool. And I think a lot of people will, this will resonate with a lot of people. When the ego takes over, when the ego is in charge, when we need to win or when we need to prove that we are right, I think that's a massive one, or when we need to show how much more we know or when we need to demonstrate by virtue of our toys how much more we are worth in car- in crematistic. I don't even want to read that. Crematistic. <laughs> how much we are worth in crematistic terms or when we need to make others aware by dropping the names of those who we know or rub shoulders with, how much more we, how much more important we are in social or pro- professional terms, when we do all of this in order to satisfy the ego or self-esteem, is showing us how little we truly value ourselves. It also tells us how little we know ourselves. And by God, am I finding that out right now? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and you know what? When I actually always, when I when I've had the therapy, so they're like, "Oh, Paul, do you love yourself?" I'm like, "Right, I love myself," but apparently I don't because I'm always craving this. This yeah. recognition and these achievements, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and apparently this yeah. is actually what can drive some super achievers, but it's not healthy. No, it's not. And it, actually, it's, it's one of the things I've, I've posted. Uh, I've said it in said it in a much shortened, uh, kind of abbreviated version than that. But I've, I've posted this quite a lot this year already in several several different different formats. And it's this. I and it, I think it's something that's really really useful to everyone. Is that you should. You should enjoy praise when it comes, yeah. right? But yeah. but don't seek it. Yeah. Right. So when it, if if someone comes along and they say, "Dax, you're fantastic. You've changed my life. You're brilliant." Da, da, da. I always enjoy it, and I I, I never do that whole kind of false humility, false false humble thing. And go, oh no, really? Da, da, da. <laughs> I always say, oh, thank you very much. It's really nice to be recognised. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, I don't seek it. So so I don't. And for exactly as you described, for a long time I was yeah. and. I found that the seeking of the praise was actually what caused me to be unhappy quite a lot of the time because, yeah. like, don't they know what I've done for them and why aren't they sending me something to say, Dax, yeah. you were brilliant, you were, you were, yeah. you, you know, you changed my life. But yeah. actually, as, as soon as you stop seeking the praise, but you enjoy it when it does come, yeah. things change. Your relationship with the need to be praised actually almost disappears. Yeah, that's, I've got to work on that more than anything. And like I say, my, and I, and I think the other thing that I want to get across was my big realization is the expectations of other people. Yeah. Just because you you put your heart and soul into it and it's your passion, um, doesn't mean that it somebody else isn't. Not necessarily. Doesn't mean they're as, not as passionate as you. But if it's your baby, they're never going to be as passionate as you anyway. Yeah. So I think that's a uh, and I, and I think that probably comes down to why a lot of personal trainers are getting so pissed off. Yes, indeed. And I, I know it's my big problem. So, like I said, I don't know what I wanted to get across there. It's almost just a rant, but I think a lot of people are probably nodding along and listening to the whole thing. Um, you know what I'm dying for? I'm really excited about somebody in the fitness industry or the, the fitness profession, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, I'm really <laughs> excited for somebody to just come out and say something different. Yeah. Because it's all a bit boring. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 become very insular. We're all kind of... We're all kind of saying the same stuff now, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Saying the same stuff and with the same voice and with yeah. the same stories and analogies and anecdotes. And, yeah. 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 Gotcha. Hmm. Right, so, I mean, look, I, to, personally, I, I think this has, been, this has been actually a really, really useful quote. For no other reason than, than to humanize, humanize the process of, 
you know, of what, you know, what it, what it feels like. I know a lot of people out there kind of generally tend to feel that they're the only ones going through this crap. Yeah. And they feel that, you know, all right, so, you know, I, I get, I still get emails and, and Facebook private messages from people telling me, yeah, but it's all right for you. You know, I, I recently had a, had a member of, member of staff at my studio who, you know, he's, he's gone now, but uh-huh. he, he'd often say, oh, yeah, but it's, it's okay for you guys. You know, yeah. he, he, he'd often be in, in conversation with my wife who manages my studio. I say, yeah, but, you know, it's all right for you. You guys are, are making money and you're, you're doing this and you yeah. can travel. It's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's a very misleading thing to think that because someone owns their business or they're making more money that everything yeah. is, or everything is working perfectly. And you're a good example of that in yeah. terms of what you're describing here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you just said you you had your you had your best financial year ever last year, didn't you? Yeah, and the and the le- with the least amount of work, right? <laughs> and I always I always want to also say it's okay if you don't have clients all day every day. You're allowed some time off as well, proper time off. It's okay yeah. if you read books that don't have anything to do with fitness or business. It's okay Absolutely. if you look at stuff online that don't have anything to do with fitness and business. And I think I think that's another point that I wanted to get across. It's okay. To, I think as fitness professionals, we give up a lot of stuff. Yeah. We give up time with our family. We give up hobbies. We give up whatever we're like doing because we think we've got to just chase this rainbow. And to be honest, the rainbow's there, but I'm not sure what the pot of gold is at the end of it. Yeah, and I I think I think going going one step further than what you just said, there, Paul. I think not only is it okay, I think it's desirable that yeah. you because you don't. You don't become a well-rounded person if if all you do is you study your study your craft. And I I was talking about this just just recently with someone about this this myth. In fact, I I, I wrote it wrote it down on, on the on Facebook in a, in a Facebook message. This this myth of success. This idea that you know I will be successful when now there are lots and lots of people who are earning a million plus dollars per year or pounds or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're doing really well financially and yet they're on their third marriage. You know, they're healthy. Their health is in the toilet. You know, yeah. kind of they, they don't love who they are and the life that they've got. So from the one, one perspective, you look at it and you say, well, they're really successful. Yeah. On the other hand, you can, you can actually point to all the areas where they're not. So why does that occur in the first place? It's because they put all their eggs in one basket. Yeah. And that is exactly what the success um, the success industry tells us to do. They say to focus on one thing to the exclusion of all others and you'll be a success. Yeah. And yeah. it's true. So if you fo- if all you do is, is focus on your fitness business, your fitness business will be great, but your health might be crap. Your kids may not have seen much more than the back of your head for three yeah. or four years. Yeah. And, you know, your wife doesn't really know who you are. Yeah. You know, so there, there's a lot more to there's a lot more to this than just pursuing one thing with all vigor. A good a good fitness professional really has to be an all round an all this, round is, per- this, this DAX has been the fastest learning curve that I've ever been on, ever. Right. Huge, massive, huge learning curve for me. And so much so that you're talking about goals. They, I don't have any goals right now, and it feels awesome. Right. I don't know what I'm going to do next, and it feels awesome. And, and you know what as well? Opportunities, and I was talking about them earlier before, there's some opportunities that have opened up to me over the last three weeks that I am convinced that if I was relentless and I was and I was goal focused and goal oriented and a business oriented. I mean, these are to do with some of them are to do with fitness. These would never have appeared. Right. I have no doubt about that. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that these, these things wouldn't, wouldn't have came because I wouldn't have been open to them. Fantastic. Which is, which is very interesting. Like I say, not having goals feels very cool. Yeah. I, I got, we all know goals can, can be very useful. They can get us, oh, get us a lot of places, but if if you let your life be led by the goals, as opposed to you, you know, you leading the you leading the goals effectively. Too many people have effectively just set up um, tick sheets. You know, they've got a list of stuff they have to get done every day, and just keep life has just become one long tick sheet. Yeah, and that's that's no that's definitely no way to live, and will yeah. certainly certainly put you into the position that you're describing. Yeah. All right. I mean, Paul, I mean, we've we covered a, a lot of ground there. I'm sure uh, there's a lot of stuff that I, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I haven't got out. Well, we can we can always jump on another one yeah. and uh, and hit them with some more. I mean, part a parting thought. So the, the the big takeaway with a capital T you want people to take away from this call from? It's okay to be yourself. Good. Well, you, or, and again, or look really look at who you are or who you want to be, or because I don't think many people. I mean, that's not even a take home point, but. So many people just never look at where they're really going. They just think that there's somewhere where you have to go. Yeah. 
It's interesting. <laughs> I don't, yeah. So, like I say, I'm not. I haven't got any answers really. Um, well, I mean, I don't. I don't think there needs to be an answer. I think. I think that that point in itself is pretty much the most valid point anyone could ever make on any topic. To be yeah. honest, I almost no. just want to get. I want to get. I don't know, mate. I don't know. Like I say, I don't know what's next. I don't know what's going on. But I, I, I wanted to talk to you and get on the phone and record the call because I just want people. Almost it. This is the point. It's okay. Yes. It's okay. It's okay for you to be yourself. It's okay for for to feel like shit sometimes. It's okay to not want to train everybody else. It's okay. Fantastic. Almost and like false that, expectations. On that wonderful point, Paul. Yes. We'll uh, we'll call it a day there. Today, it's okay. Buddy. Thanks for. Both being on the call and being so honest about some some you know really personal stuff, Thanks, but man. stuff that I think is going to be really important and really helpful to a lot of to a lot of people. Yeah, cool. I hope it does help. And if if you guys want to get in touch, um, drop me an email. Do not Facebook me because you will not get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dax. Yeah, Cheers. Thanks, Paul. Bye, bye, Take bye, care, buddy. bye.